So I guess welcome everyone to a uh, high school experience seminar hosted by Chinese School at Chapel Hill. Uh, and we will start introducing ourselves. So my name is Steven and I am a sophomore at East Chapel Hill High School. Uh, my name is Jian Mu. Uh, I'm a freshman at East Chapel Hill High School. Hi, um, I can't currently turn on my camera, but I'm Raina Joe, um, and I'm a freshman at Chapel Hill High School. Hi, my name is Angela. I'm a freshman at Chapel Hill High also. Um, so now that we've introduced ourselves, can we have our guest speakers introduce ourselves? And could you say your name, the high school you went to, the college you're going to, and something that makes you unique? I guess I can go first. Hey guys, my name is Laura. I go to Chapel High. I will be studying CS at Duke next year. Um, I guess some things about me, um, some clubs that I do are STEM club, ASA, and Science Olympiad, and then I also play tennis, been the captain for two years, and thank you guys for having me. I'm very excited to be here today. Hi, everyone. Um, sorry if my voice is weird. I actually have COVID right now, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, it's on Zoom anyway. So I'm Caroline Chen, and I'm currently a senior at East, and I'm going to Stanford in the fall, probably studying... Um, like public policy or econ um, and something uh, unique about me. Um, I can crack an egg with one hand. Uh, I also write for my school newspaper and play Frisbee and some other things I'll probably talk about later. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Emily Gao. I went to Durham Academy in Durham and this fall I'll be going to Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. Something unique about me, I love to cook and run. And yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is David Wang. I'm a senior at East and next year I'll be going to UCLA. And something unique about me is I used to work at Panera Bread. Okay, what's up guys? I'm Julia Shao, and I'm currently a senior at East Chapel Hill High School. I'll be going to Johns Hopkins in the fall and Something unique about me is that I have a twin sister. Okay, um, I'm Aiden. I go to Chapel Hill High School. Um, I guess I'm going to Carnegie Mellon. And one unique thing about me, I guess, is that I'm probably also going to swim there. And I also have a twin sister. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Justin. Uh, I go to Chapel High as well, and I'm a senior. And uh, one unique thing about me is that uh, I like I also like to cook and run. And um, yeah. Hey guys, I'm Kevin Zhao. I'm a senior at East, and in the fall I'll be going to UPenn. And I guess one unique thing about me is that I've been fencing for like five or six years. And yeah, it's good to be here. Okay, so in this meeting, we'll be going over some academic questions, uh, questions about extracurriculars, uh, college applications, hardships throughout high school, and at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. So people in the audience can type questions they have in the chat. Okay, so starting off with the academic questions, uh, what is your opinion about taking AP classes? And some of the questions related to that would be, would it be beneficial to take as many as you can? And is it really helpful or is it really useful in college? And if you think you have, if you think you have the answer to it, you can just unmute and you can answer the question. Um, sure, I can go on this. I think uh, before anyone says anything like is useful or not, uh, something that's undeniable is that if you take an AP class and you do well in it, your GPA is going to be higher compared to if you didn't take that AP class. Like that's not uh, an opinion or anything. That's just how it is. But I think like 
beneficial to take like as many as you can just for the sake of taking them. I don't really find, I don't really see any merit in that because a lot of AP classes are not really anything that you'd be interested in doing. And when you later on like apply for colleges and stuff, they can also see the classes that you take and they can see like what kind of narrative you build throughout your academic career. And if it doesn't really make sense to you, it wouldn't really make sense to them either. All right, I guess to add on. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I guess like add on to that, just like do stuff you're like, I think colleges care a little more about like passion, just like do the APs that you're actually passionate about. Like don't, you don't like need to take some AP classes of like you're gonna do something completely unrelated in the future. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think there's going to be a balance where you do want to have a good GPA, but you also want to leave time for other things in your life that isn't like school and like your extracurriculars that cater more to your interests, which which would actually, like Kevin says, it's like it's building more of a narrative about what you're interested in rather than like, oh, they're just a good student. Like they just got a bunch of A's and a bunch of like AP classes. That's not as interesting as if you took like three like biology related classes throughout high school and biomed classes and then your extracurriculars are related to that too. Um, instead of taking those AP classes and then taking like AP human geography and AP art history and what blah, 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 just to get the higher GPA. Um, and I think more and more, like in recent years, a lot of students are like CDMing classes and um, taking as many APs as they can in the first part of high school, um, like early on in your career. And honestly, like I didn't take any freshman year and I took, well, I did take three sophomore year, which was kind of a lot already, but some people are taking some freshman year. Um, and it was like, it was fine for me. And um, it's just like, you don't need to put too much stress on yourself to do the AP classes. Like there's, it's going to work out no matter how many you take throughout high school, just like whatever you're interested in. Yeah. And to add on to that. So I was recruited for tennis. And when I was talking to the coaches, I had like a lot of insight into like the actual college application stuff and how they review you. And it's like your class rank, which is you know, why you take APs because you get a higher GPA and it boosts your class rank. Like your class rank only matters to a certain degree and they only like really care about if you're in the top 10%. So like I didn't take too many APs and I still ended up in the top 10%. Um, so my opinion is just like, you don't have to take that many. You still do have to take a couple, but yeah. Um, to add on to that too, like the, for the college admissions process, like they're, they're going to see a bunch of kids with really good GPAs and, you know, model students. So you're going to have to have other things to set you, set yourself aside from others. So um, taking AP classes are really important. But if you, you take all your time to take these AP classes, you're not going to do it as well as someone who still, like, maintains a great GPA, but maybe allocates more of their time towards extracurriculars. Personally, I found both AP English classes to be really helpful in terms of getting me interested in reading and improving my writing and analytical skills. So if that's something that you're looking for, I would really recommend them. And they were also beneficial for writing my essays, not just for college, but just learning about writing in general. And at my school, APs didn't affect our GPAs at all. I only took six. So really just take the ones that you like that you're interested in, that you think you can do well in, and yeah. Um, to add on to that, I think that um, if you take many APs, it could show colleges that um, that you're willing to challenge yourself academically, but I also don't think you should push yourself, and so you should focus more on valuable um, experience in the design major that you want. For example, one class I could help with this is at East. I don't know if it's at other classes, but there's this um, internship class I could do in a field that you're passionate on. So I didn't mind in business. And I think that that could help you if you're interested in that. Yeah, um, I agree with what everybody said. Um, yeah, definitely it can be beneficial in terms of like rigor and maybe helping you prepare for college, but I definitely wouldn't take as many as you can um, maybe one thing I would do differently is maybe take less APs because I found that senior year when I took less APs and 
took classes that I generally thought would be more interested in. Like I took Adobe this year and I really enjoyed it. Excuse me. And um, I just kind of wish I took that a bit earlier. And it's an honors class, by the way. And um, so I could take higher levels of Adobe and, you know, pursue more interest in the arts and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for answering the question. So let's move on to the next question, which is, uh, what is AP Chinese like if you have taken AP Chinese? Or like how, how difficult it is, how is the homework, and uh, what about the final exam? Is it very hard? And another would be, do you have a subject area of focus in your high school course selection? Um, I took AP Chinese during sophomore year, which is COVID. So I don't think we had a final exam. But for the AP exam, um, if you speak Chinese at home, I think you should be fine. But you do have to know some of um, like Chinese history and culture and stuff like that. And as for homework, it was also online. So I did all of it um, in the in the class at school, online class at school. So I didn't really have any homework. So it wasn't the hardest class uh, work wise. Yeah, to add on to that, like I, I think it's probably like the easiest AP there is. Like we took the AP exam like in person during COVID and I basically didn't say anything for the speaking section and I still got a five. So I don't think you have to worry too much about it as long as you're like moderately competent in Chinese. Uh, I can't really speak to the first question because I didn't take AP Chinese, but I can answer the second part, which is like a subject area of focus in course selection. And I think that throughout like my high school, I think my academics are more centered around the STEM field. And then I guess more specifically physics, which is also the, the major that I applied for at UPenn. All right. Um, I also can't really answer the first question. I took I took Spanish instead, which, in my opinion, was also not too difficult, even though obviously I don't speak Spanish at home. Um, but in general, I would recommend you to take the AP languages. Um, it's also it, it's just like a good progression from what you're studying, um, like as the requirements. So I would definitely recommend that. But um, in terms of my subject area, I different from Kevin. Um, I actually did a lot of humanities classes um, uh, and kind of related to the previous question, actually. Um, one of the unique things I studied in high school was the journalism class, um, which at first I didn't really want to take because it was like, oh, no, it's not an AP class. Like it was just a standard class for the first year and then honors for the next two years. Um, but in the end, it's like 0 0.01 GPA point difference if I took another AP class, for example. So, um, and it ended up, I think, boosting my um, my application and resume and other ways. Uh, so I would definitely recommend just, you don't have to go for journalism for sure, but just something that you're interested in, um, even if you think it's not an AP, but um, just having that kind of passion and um, motivation to seek out your own interests um, might attract college's attention too. Um, as well as just being more interesting for yourself and making high school more enjoyable. Um, yeah, so I didn't take an AP in any language. I feel like you have to really enjoy the language to take it just because you have to learn so much vocab and stuff. But I did focus on engineering. I took three years um, in the PLTW engineering path. I felt like it was really useful for me to just like figure out if I wanted to go into engineering in college in the future. And it's just like, it also boosted my GPA because it's AP weighted. So I would recommend that if you have like incoming freshmen, especially, it would really boost their GPA. And we also get to do a lot of fun stuff in that class, like um, like launching rockets or building gliders. So I would say focus in some like on something you're interested in. Okay, thank you very much. And would anyone else like to answer? Not, we can move on to the next question, which is how did you prepare for standardized tests like SAT and ACT? And is it still important as it is optional for some colleges?
Uh, okay, I can go first again. Um, so through preparation, I just use taking practice tests basically. Like there's a lot of free practice tests online for both the SAT and the ACT. Like if you find like the right website that just has a bunch of them, you're never gonna run out, like trust me. But if you um, are able to find them, you can always go out and buy like those SAT books, which is just like 10 practice tests basically. And at least like for me, that's what helped me the best, which is just getting used to doing them. Because honestly, like at a certain point, you know how to do the standardized test. It's just like getting into the rhythm of doing standardized testing. And I think it's important to note that when it comes to colleges, test optional it doesn't mean test not considered. It just means that you have the option of sending it in or not. And while some colleges may say that like, oh, if you don't send in a test, you won't be at a disadvantage. That's true. But if somebody somehow has like the same profile as you, but they do send in a test score, they could potentially be held to like a higher standard than you are. So yeah, it's true. While you're not being penalized, they could be lifted a little above you. So keep that in mind. I took a summer class, I think, for SAT reading and the math subject test, but I ended up taking the ACT in the fall of my junior year. And I just, again, used past tests that I could find online, which I found really helpful just doing them before school, during my free period, any time I had throughout the day. Definitely would recommend taking the standardized test early on if possible. I know a lot of people do in senior year. I did it junior year and thought it was nice just to have it out of the way. And there's also a lot of YouTube videos online that can explain problems if you can't find the solutions to certain tests. Um, but yeah. I think, um... I do agree that the test scores are still something that you should at least take the tests for and see what your scores are. But um, but now because it is optional, it does mean that if you do get above like a certain point, then it's not as necessary to go and take the test like like thirty times to get like ten points higher in the SAT or um, you know just get like once you get past a certain threshold, they're pretty much just good enough. Like you don't need to um, nitpick your score too much. Um, and the main thing with improving your score, I guess, um, would just be familiarizing yourself with the questions because it's very formulaic on both of the tests. Um, it's always like one kind of, on the reading section, for example, it's always like a comparison passage and then a nonfiction passage. Or, so you just, just, just like learning how to time yourself on those and um, just getting to know the different types of vocabulary and questions that they'll ask. Um, but also, yeah, just don't stress yourself out too much about it. Um, it's definitely a big perk if you get a good score, but if you don't have a good score, just you don't have to send it in then. Um, as for taking the SAT or ACT, I was just taking the SAT if you're stronger in math because there's two math sections on there, so it counts for like 50% of your score. While in the ACT, there's only a one math section there's also like a science section which is basically reading graphs yeah i would say take the act if you're like really quick with reading because it's literally just like reading comprehension and how fast you can get through the problems i feel like the sat is a little more like skills based yeah to add on to everybody so um the way i prepare was I took the Chinese school um, SAT prep class for like one or two years and you know I did a lot of studying besides that and I honestly thought um, maybe that was a bit too much studying like I would have probably wished to spend more time doing other stuff um, and I think just the standardized tests in general you know sometimes at a certain point it is kind of a waste of time and waste of money because it is expensive so I think that um, although it is useful and could add to your application, like I would recommend like not spending too much time on it. Just like Caroline said, bringing it up by 10 points. I think you could use your time on more meaningful stuff like um, other parts of the application if you want to do that. Um, for me, I don't think like my score was necessarily too high, but um, I still submitted my ACT score um, even though it was test optional just because I didn't think it would hurt my application. And in my mind, I kind of thought like, 
if I didn't submit it, it seems like I'm kind of hiding something. Um, I don't know exactly how it works in the college admissions process, but um, I still did submit my ACT, yeah. I mean, to answer the other questions in chat, like a, re a test score that you would want, like it varies like from the schools that you want to go to, but like normally you, you can just look at like search up like the 50th percentile or something and base it off that. Like you don't need to be like in the 90th percentile for them to like want you to go to school because SAT is only like a small part of your application. And then to address another part, like another question asked, like how did we develop our essays? I guess just like you just had to find something that you can actually write from like the bottom of your heart, like that shows you something that you're actually passionate about. And I started like in, I think like June. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna add on to what everyone else said about the SAT and ACT. Um, for me, I didn't really prepare for these at all. Um, the extent of my studying was I took like one or two practice tests like the day before taking these tests. And honestly, that really helped. Um, I really, I really like suggest that you take um, some practice tests because it can really help you get used to like the pacing of these tests. They're pretty fast paced. Um, the content of these tests are not too hard. Um, you're going to cover most of these in your high school curriculum, like your ninth and 10th grade. So really you just have to get used to the pacing and how fast you need to go and just like the overall format. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for answering the questions. Uh, if nobody else has uh, anything to add on to this, we can move on to the next question which is, what is the standard for National Merit Scholar and or National AP Scholar? And, uh, how do you apply? Okay. Um, so National Merit Scholarships, <clears throat> or just National Merit in general, is actually like something that's determined based off of your PSAT score. And the PSAT is something that all juniors in the junior year are mandated to take. So you have to take the exam. And the threshold for each state is different, and it also varies by year. What after taking the PSAT, if it's like, if you guys find out that you guys do have a high enough score, you'll automatically be like put into the application process, so to say. But after you have like you are notified that you're a semifinalist, which is just having a high enough score, you're then gonna move into like applying for the finalist, which your school counselor will probably send you an email with like how to open your application and how to do that. But what the application consists of, it's actually a little bit similar to the college application, but basically they want some of your activities that you've done and like some of your commitments as well as like any like work experience you've had. And they also want one teacher recommendation as well as an essay. And the essay that they want for national merit is actually a little bit similar to the common app essay I actually literally just copied and pasted my common app essay onto my national merit application. And after that, once you're a finalist, like if you pass that round, you can then be considered for a couple of scholarships. And some schools offer special privileges for national merit scholars. One of them I know off the top of my head is USC. They offer, um, I think it's either half tuition or 75% tuition reduction, as well as a special dorm for people who are national merit finalists. So just be on the lookout for what schools you might be interested in, what policies they have regarding it. And in regards to AP scholars, they're actually, AP scholar is something that the college board also automatically will give you out if you have like the necessary AP scores. And I think it's like, there's distinction and like honor, I think. And it's just based on like how high the averages of your AP scores are. Yeah, I think you can also find all of the standards listed out pretty clearly online on the college board and the websites just via Google search. So if you're interested in more information, it's definitely out there. Okay, thank you very much for answering the question. Uh, does anyone else have an answer to the question? If not, we can move on. So as GPA is less emphasized, what do you think students should do to make themselves stand out? And uh, just a quick reminder, 
uh, that we'll have a Q&A session in the end, as Reina said in chat. So just uh, be aware that yeah, we can answer like the questions in chat uh, during the Q&A session. Yeah. Um, I guess I can, oh, sorry, I guess I'll go ahead and just put my thoughts on this question. Um, I would say I don't think GPA is less emphasized necessarily, but um, I think increasingly a lot of, there's just a lot of good students applying to a lot of these good schools. So everyone kind of has good GPAs now. Um, maybe that's kind of a trend, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, the question of how to stand out is definitely like a huge thing <laughs> um, for like essays, for applications, like every part of it. So um, the broadest advice I could give is just like follow your interests and not cater to a lot of general advice that other people give you that you should do. Um, like people are like, oh, you should join a niche sport um, or you should play the oboe or something. Um, but just really find what you enjoy and um, that could be something that's academic related, like, um, like the biomed example earlier, like maybe you're just really interested in volunteering at hospitals or something, um, or it's just like uh, just doing something that's not even academic related, um, like playing ping pong or something um, and just getting to a good level at something um, it's I think that's the main thing it's like you do have to be good at something in some way um, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that other people have said before that worked for them but it just has to be something that you're interested in that you're kind of good at um, and then I would also say like yeah like you don't have to win a lot of huge rewards or anything but um, it's a lot easier to make an application appeal to an admissions officer if there's like some kind of qualification for what you're doing. Um, so you can keep that in mind when you're finding things that you like to do. Um, yeah. I would also add, I feel like the numbers part is what's looked at first, probably in admissions. So having a good GPA helps, but other than that, just knowing how to explain your activities and what you've done, who you are personally and what you value in life is really important and doing that thoroughly and effectively through your essays and your application and your activities really gives insight to your reader on who you are as a person and gives them more reasons to advocate for you other than just good numbers, which a lot of other people will have. So if you can just kind of focus on showing yourself and who you are very authentically. I feel like that's also really important. Yeah, I think that like, as others have said, instead of thinking as GPA as like something that can move your application in and out of like, except or not, GPA can more be seen as like a bottom line for applying to these top schools. Because as Caroline said before, everyone's gonna have these good GPAs if in the competitive area. So I think that like, yeah, no matter what activity you do, as long as you spend like a lot of time and passion into it, people can see like your commitment and just because it's more or less niche or not doesn't make your commitment to it any less impactful. So you don't have to try to specifically seek out these things that nobody else is doing. Because even if you're picking out like, like a common activity per se, and you put a lot of time and effort into it, the things that like you build along along the way, people can see that and it'll make it stand out naturally. But as such, like as Caroline also said, awards are just a very like easy way to make like landmarks or achievements visible to those who are viewing it. Yeah, to like kind of add on to what Kevin said, you should do things not for the sake of like like boosting your stats, but like doing it for the sake of passion, which will actually shine through like over just doing it for the sake of getting into college. Yeah, to add on to what everyone said, um, you'll find when you are interested in something or you're passionate about something, you'll like try to, you know, find yourself
Sorry about the technical difficulty, guys. Uh, does anyone else have an answer to the question? Um, I guess while Laura is coming back, I, I can add something else um, I forgot earlier. Uh, another thing that I think all colleges across the board would be happy to see is um, leadership um, because you know they want to produce people in the who come out of their college like leading things in the world and making a good name for themselves. And, um, you know, so they want to see you in high school already like having initiative to um, not only follow your passions, but also like lead in your community in those passions. Um, so I wouldn't say that you need to go and start like 10 clubs just to say you're president of this, 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 but just like, um, it just comes naturally as a process of being interested in things that you'll go like kind of through different ranks of whatever organizations that you're part of. Um, it shouldn't be like your ultimate goal, but it's kind of like a byproduct that is definitely very helpful. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, but yeah. Also don't make it like your sole goal to be like, oh, I, I want to be president of piano club when I'm a senior or something, but um, it's something that you should yeah, keep in mind when um you're like applying for officer positions or something like it's definitely important it also doesn't have to be like a formal title or position i think in a lot of activities at school you can show initiative even just as a member so don't worry if like not all of your activities have you listed as the president or the founder or some very official sounding title there's so many ways to make change and kind of initiate things even not as a formal position holder. Um, to add on to what Caroline and Emily just said, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like through club positions. Um, you can show your leadership or you know any other positive trait, mostly through your essays. I think that's a really important part of the college admissions process. And it's a great way to show your personality and like what steps you've taken to pursuing your field. Thank you, everyone, for answering the question. Uh, Laura, I see you, uh, you, you just came back. So would you like to uh, restate your answer? Or... Yeah, sorry about that. I don't really know what happened. But um, yeah, I think most everybody, they covered everything. But um, yeah, I think what you need to do is just find what you're passionate about. And I know that everyone just says, like, be you. But that is true. Um, you will find that like when you find something that you're passionate about, you will be able to show it in your writing and what you're doing, and you'll be able to pursue other activities that are related to that. So you'll try to find, you know, maybe internships and like other people haven't mentioned like awards. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff can help you stand out, but it definitely is a hard question um, to like think about and consider when doing the application process. Sounds good. Thank you. And uh, we can move on to the next question. How is this a kind of specific? And uh, you can answer if it, if it is applicable to you, and which is how helpful is North Carolina School of Science and Math? And is this uh, worth applying? So I think as people can remember from the beginning, none of us actually attended the North Carolina School of Science and Math. And I can't really speak for the others, but personally, I didn't apply either. I think a good rule of thumb is just to, one is like, if you do know anybody who attends, you should probably ask them. And two is like, you should just look at what type of environment NCSSM is. And if you think that you under that environment would perform better than you do normally, then I think it is worth applying for. But otherwise, 
I don't think it's a worth applying for just because it's NCSSN. Because remember, when you're there, you're also going to be competing against like these other star studded students who also are got in. So it's just like kind of a trade off. And it's just, I think it's more worth it to do in depth research on it. But I can't give a good answer to this question. Okay. Thank you for answering. Uh, does anyone else uh, have an answer? I mean, I'm pretty sure I heard that like if you got into NCSSM, you can get into like UNC and NC State. So, like that's like one thing. If you want to like get an early like admission, basically to UNC or NC State. I mean, that's the only thing I know about NCSSM. Yeah, if you get in, there's a grant now where you get free admission to all UNC system schools and free tuition. So that's about it. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Thank you. And that marks the end of academic questions, right? Yeah, that's that's a repeat of the so yeah that marks the end of academic questions and uh, uh okay uh so first question for extracurriculars what clubs have you participated slash are currently in both in school and out of school and if so were you in any positions of leadership and then do you think that any of these clubs contributed to your acceptance Um, I was the vice president of DECA. Um, if anyone's interested in joining that, that's I think it's a good club to show your interest in business. And I was also the vice president in the Refugee Community Partnership. And I had some smaller leadership roles in some other clubs, or I was just a member. Um, I think that you don't have to join that many clubs. But I do think that out of all my clubs, the only ones that really helped me were the ones that um, I had leadership um, roles in. So I'll, Sorry. I'll go really quick. I, I was involved in student government a lot in high school and class council and in some of our committees, like the academic committee and student life committee. I really enjoyed it. I got to organize and lead grade wide programming and fundraise and all that fun stuff and definitely got to meet a lot of new people and just learn about working with different people. I really recommend that if you're interested. I also ran cross country for two years and was captain this past year and senior year and started a peer tutoring program at my school through the academic committee. So some leadership formal positions here and there, but not across everything that I did. And I also wrote a research paper with Matthew Liu from Chapel Hill. We looked into the pandemic's impacts on US students' dental health. And that was not a club that I did, but another activity. And also wanted to take like this opportunity to thank the Chinese school community for all of your help in sharing and filling out our questionnaire. That was really helpful for us. And we found generally that students of a non-US background were like less likely to visit the dentist during the pandemic and had a higher fear level of COVID-19. So yeah, those are some of the things that I was involved in. I feel like, I don't know for certain if any of these clubs contributed to my acceptance, obviously, because I wasn't my reader, but I feel like I did all of these things because I genuinely enjoyed them and didn't do it just for the purpose of listing them on my application or for college. And it was overall a really happy and rewarding experience, just being active and involved in my community which I think is really important when you consider activities that you might want to do. Okay, so me personally, um, I didn't really get involved in many clubs. Uh, I did attend a couple, just a few times, and I, don't, I didn't really get any leadership positions. So uh, make that what you will. But uh, before I end, I will say that I do highly recommend joining clubs and getting involved in clubs. If there's one thing I could change about what I did, it would be to get more involved in clubs because I think not only are they fun, you know, they could be really, it could be a great way to establish connections and just be entertained. Um, I do think that they are helpful to your acceptance overall, 
just I didn't really. So yeah, um, I was part of one club throughout high school, basically. And that was the debate club. Oh, actually, I did robotics my freshman year, but I stopped going afterwards because I just realized that it wasn't something that I was ready to commit a large amount of time into. But debate was, and I ended up doing that for all four years, and now I'm president of the club. If you would like to join, feel free to contact me. But aside from that, I think that it was definitely helpful to my college acceptance. And I think that anything you put on your application will put a little bit of weight on it. Although like the amount of it may depend on just like how in-depth your role is or how much you've done in it. Uh, um, anyway, anyway uh, outside of school, I only did a sport, which was fencing, but I might cover that later. Okay. Um, if no one has any more to add, then we can move on. Uh, I can I can go and I think Julia okay. has something to say too. <laughs> um, actually, Julia can go first. Okay. Um, so I didn't participate in any clubs actually. I just played tennis um, throughout my high school career, and yeah, I would say that helped my acceptance a lot. Like I'm a medium student, but a very solid athlete, and I was like I qualified for basically like like very top schools athletically, you know, but not, um, but I was a little more limited academically just because I had put so much time into tennis, like at least two to three hours a day into tennis. So I would say, um, you know, just try to balance your extracurriculars. Thank you, Caroline. Okay, so I, we just all need to hear. Um, Julia is being very humble. She's like top in the state for tennis, top in the country. So anyways, um, so for me personally, I did a lot of clubs both at school and out of school. And I would recommend any of them um, if you're interested in like politics or just social justice causes. Um, I would say the main ones I did were school newspaper. It's not really a club, but it's a class that you can join. Um, and that I think definitely contributed a lot to my acceptances because I ended up winning some awards for that. Um, like pretty high level ones that I guess admission officers would it would stand out to them. Um, but that can, those kinds of awards can happen at any kind of club or any kind of extracurricular as well. So I would just say, just go ahead and pursue your interests like pretty early on and be committed to that. Um, and then in the different clubs I did, I did like Model UN, um, the same one as David, Refugee Committee Partnership, um, like the Chapel Hill Youth Council. And I, was like in leadership for all of those. Um, so I guess I, I would, and also like National Honor Society, some other clubs at school. I would say, I would actually recommend that you don't try to do so many like president positions um, just because then it might seem like you're doing that just because, um, just because of the position. Um, I don't think I was doing that, but um, I know maybe on applications, it might've seemed like I was kind of all over the place with um, the extracurriculars that I was doing and maybe not as committed to one particular one. Um, but I do think that I still tried to keep mine kind of related. They were all kind of focused on like social sciences or like um, just general commitment to social justice causes. And I tried to connect those in the essay. So if you do have a lot of kind of extracurriculars that are not so related, um, the essay is a good place to kind of explain that and say, well, this is how they're all passionate to me, or this is why I'm passionate about all of them um, in this way. And you can kind of make it make sense to the admissions officers there. That's my advice for extracurriculars. I, I personally was not involved in any, any like school clubs either because swimming kind of like overlap with that. And that's what like one of my main extracurriculars too. But I did like also, so a lot of my like extracurriculars are like into like what I did by myself, but I also was part of like a nonprofit, which I also like spent most of my time, like all of my like extracurricular time, like working for. So like, I think like having a central, I don't know, I just like volunteered for one specific organization, like for all four years of my high school. And that might've like shown passion for a certain like subject. 
Yeah, for me, um, the main three clubs I was involved with Science Olympia and ASA and STEM Club, which probably you guys don't know, but I just worked with like led STEM activities and engineering challenges with marginalized groups in our community, like school, like their after school. Um, so I did have leadership positions in all three of these clubs. Um, I think that they contributed to my acceptance. I think it kind of showed my interest and um you know, passion in STEM and like volunteering in my community, which I really wanted to show in my application. Um, and I think one other thing that like really helped me in my acceptance was like my internships that helped me in CS um, that like showed myself, showed myself like in the workplace, I guess, um, in high school, like during the summer. So I worked with you know, the Durham Fire Department. And then I also worked with a game to learn lab with NC State. So these kind of internships helped me, um, you know, learn more about my interest in CS and kind of guided me towards, uh, I don't know, like trying to major in CS next year. <laughs> uh, does anyone have anything else to add? Okay, um, then I think we can move on. So I know you guys talk about how like uh, it'd be good to find something that you're like passionate in and stuff like that, um, but it might be hard to find something that you're passionate in. So how did you choose the extracurriculars right for you and what factors should you consider? Um, oh, you know how it, 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 uh, You got it, you got it. <laughs> okay, okay. So personally, uh, how I went around to find my extracurriculars was a little bit based off of just like the way I was like when I was younger. Like I really enjoyed being active, but I kind of sucked at a lot of sports. I won't lie. Like I kind of bounced around between various sports when I was like in elementary school or younger. But then like somehow sooner or later, I landed on fencing and it just like seemed right for me. So I stuck with it. So it's not that I intentionally sought it out because it was like some niche sport that could get me into college. But rather, I just tried it out. I had fun. And then I found out that I could get some results with it, which is kind of added on to me enjoying the experience. And then as for debate, uh, I don't know. Debate was just like something that I picked because back in middle school, I kind of had issues like with public speaking and just like speaking in general. So once I joined, High school, once I went to high school, I was like, all right, um, let's see like one way I can try to fix this. And I was like, all right, if debate is like a club that can force me to like, speak a certain way or just like be out, get out there more, then I think it's sort of like a worth a shot to join. And I think it ultimately it helped me a lot as a person and it also helped me on my college applications process. I, for me, like since my main extracurricular was like once again, always swimming, I had to like find other extracurriculars to like, I had to like find time, like that's something didn't take to do my other ones. So like I found like making apps, I like made a lot of apps and like joined competitions for building apps as like my main extracurricular because I could do it at home as like my time with swimming, like contradicted with a lot of school clubs. So that's how I found like computer programming. Yeah, I think um, when looking for extracurriculars, especially for clubs, um, I think each school has a club day. I know at least Chapel Hill does. Um, usually when it's in person, it's much more interesting and you get to see what all the clubs do. And, you know, there's probably like 90 clubs going on. And um, through that freshman year, I was signed up probably for like over 10 clubs, you know, they look interesting. They give me candy. Like I'm going to sign up. And, you know, I stayed on the email list. Maybe some of them I didn't want to commit as much time on. And then I kind of realized which clubs I wanted to spend more time with uh, based on just like my interest or what I wanted out of the club. And that's how I kind of chose the clubs I wanted to do. And also obviously like influences from like upperclassmen that told me, um, like I had friends in these clubs, that kind of stuff, or like my brother helped me, um, wanted me to work together in this club, that kind of stuff. But um, I think definitely like club day is very helpful in seeing, um, you know, what there is to offer. I would definitely like try new things, maybe things you wouldn't expect to like, um, and then kind of see from there. Yeah, definitely be open to different opportunities that come your way and say yes to them early on. 
And then as time goes on, you'll figure out what resonates and what sticks with what you enjoy. That's what happened with student government. I got like an email about running for class council. I was like, okay, why not just give it a shot, wrote something up, put it in there. And it turned out to be an activity that I really enjoyed and was really impactful for me throughout high school. I also really enjoy working with teachers and faculty. So student government was also like the perfect way to do that. So just kind of think about the type of people and community that you want to surround yourself with and who's, you know, in the club or organization and what kind of impact or activities that you might be able to do. I also found it really helpful talking with upperclassmen just to see what they've done, what they're interested in and recommendations from them. That's kind of how I got into cross country. But yeah, just don't be afraid to try new things, get outside your comfort zone. And even if it's a small interest that you have, you can find ways to make it bigger, just starting from first your friends and then your school or maybe your grade and reaching out to people in the community you might know who can help you expand it even further. Um, I would, oh, no, go ahead. Um, I would recommend only choosing the extracurriculars that actually interest you, um, especially since that on the common application, which is what most common college applications are um, using, uh, they only have space for 10 activities. So for me, I wanted to do most of my activities in the field of business or like economics. Uh, so I feel like um, a lot of my extracurriculars were in that field. And I also was interested in research. So I had some extracurriculars in that field too, because I think that colleges want to see that you have a, want to see a strong spike. Like um, you, you know what you're interested in and um, uh, you're demonstrating interest in getting work experience in that field. I think that would help a lot. Uh, I just want to say how glad I am that Emily mentioned that because, um, yeah, I really think that the most important uh, factor when choosing an extracurricular is just going out there and um, taking all these opportunities, trying things out. If you don't like it, so what, just move on. Um, but yeah, you should really just try things. Yeah, actually building a little bit off of what David said, I wanted to mention this earlier, but I forgot, is that like, as you get later on and you start to like really find out what you're interested in, and I don't mean like at the beginning of high school or it's too early, I think it's good to start building a narrative that you'll center your application around. And why you, you don't necessarily have to have a huge spike, that is like one option you can go with, just building like a strong core around like a certain field or a certain major or interest will be helpful in like cementing that like throughout high school, you've been working towards this one goal and it'd be easier to see. I mean, to add one, to add on one small thing, like I think parents are like a very good mentor. So if your parents are like really like knowledgeable about something, you should add, you should definitely like consider having them like tell you more about like what they're studying. All right, does anyone have anything else to add? Okay, um, next question. Wait. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, and you guys already answered the first question, but um, how did you balance like these two commitments, um, like sports and arts with academics? I didn't do any arts, but I did run cross country and I played volleyball for a really long time before that. For me, I just took every like free time moment between practice or after practice as a way to get caught up on schoolwork. And I just use practice as a chance really just to be present in the moment and to enjoy the sport and what I was doing and being with my teammates. I felt like cross country was a nice break from the day. And then coming back home was when I like restarted up homework and just planning out your day and writing things down, especially any commitments or meetings you have, having that on paper or documented really helps. That way you can visually see like when you'll have extra time and then you'll think about things that you might accomplish during those segments. So I think that's really helpful and what I did to balance. I agree with Emily. I think um, just generally one of my biggest pieces of advice for just life in general, I guess, is having an agenda somewhere. Um, I've always used a paper one, but I know a lot of people just like 
online like your phone or something but yeah please use an agenda or a planner somehow um especially just later through high school like you really yeah like it's so easy to miss a club meeting or a sports practice um and then with this question too i would say yeah so i i was the captain of my school's ultimate frisbee team or the girls frisbee team um junior and senior year um and a freshman and sophomore year we just had practices and like every day and i think um kind of like what emily was saying um honestly i would really recommend having some kind of commitment like that um that gets you to commit some part of your day like every single day um to something that's not like sitting in a building or just standing there doing nothing um like using your body just really helps reset your brain i guess to um be more focused when you're doing homework or just um being more present in the other moments of your day um and just like limiting your time a little bit by having that block of time set aside to a sport or like dance or something like that um it helps like make your work in other times more efficient i guess um so i would say the main thing is yeah being able to plan your time like literally planning it on paper i i recommend that um and then also just like um like recognizing that what you're doing like why you're doing it like not just like a robot going to practice cuz your mom signed you up for something or something like that but just like like being being in the moment and whatever you're doing and that that helps like make your time in the sport or art um, more meaningful and also your time at home doing homework or in school um, a lot more meaningful as well. I personally played piano, but I also swam. But since I spent so much time swimming, I was actually not that good at piano. But since I like playing piano, I actually just kept doing it. But like, yeah, it's like I played it not because I was good at it, because like when we were at piano recitals, I'd always just like see these eighth graders playing really hard pieces. I was playing some like easy piece, but like, because I enjoyed it, I kept doing it. Um, yeah, I agree with Caroline, like sports are very, or not even sports, but something to do after school is very important. Like I would never want to just like have to go to school for uh, seven hours and then go home and have to study. Like you really want something to break up that routine or you're going to burn out really easily. I think more in terms of the balance part, uh, and if you like aren't able to use like sport or art as a way to unwind and it's like another task you need to accomplish, I think the most important part is just finding what your limits are. Because like at the end of the day, if you're doing something, you can't really let the balance control you. You have to control it. If you're someone who can handle being high strong all the time, jumping from one activity right to the other and then just basically like staying on the grind all the time, then like that's okay. But if you aren't, then you need to like acknowledge that early on and then make the necessary changes to your schedule. Otherwise, throughout these four years, like that's going to have a snowball effect. And as you get later on, it's just going to keep piling on and piling on. And at some point, it's just going to be out of your control. So before that happens, it's best that like you decide like what activities you're going to want to do and like how much commitment you're going to put into them. Yeah, to add on to what Kevin was saying, I think just high school in general is just a place or time just to try new things and see what works best for you um, before you become like really busy in college and you don't have time to like try things out especially I think study habits um, in high school are very helpful to like try new things and see what works so um, in terms of sports I think that and just other extracurriculars they have helped me with my time management I think just because um yeah, like everyone has been saying, you know, you got to plan out your day. And I think um, knowing those days that I like wouldn't have practice and I'm just sitting at home, I find that I procrastinate even more because I know that I have more time to do it. But um, knowing that I have to, you know, go to, you know, tennis practice today or have a game or something, um, I know that I have to get it done. Either I do it in class or I can get it efficiently done at home. Um, so, yeah, just in general, I think it does help with my time management. I would also add to prioritize your sleep as well. So if one day of the week is going to be super busy for you, or if you get home really late and you can't finish all your schoolwork, try to just reach out to your teachers 
early and promptly. They are usually super understanding of these types of things and would be happy to work with you to figure out like a different schedule if you have tests or you need to submit something, but just reaching out early on, not like the day of, um, I feel like your teachers would definitely be responsive and definitely get sleep. Cool, does anyone have anything else to add? Okay, um, if so, I think we're gonna skip the next question because we have three more sections you wanna get through and we already answered, kind of answered that one, so. Um, Jet, if you could start. Um, all right, so now we're moving on to the applying for colleges section. So uh, how many colleges did you apply to and what advice or strategies do you have for college applicants in the future? Um, I applied to eight colleges and I would suggest uh, mainly to start early, uh, like the summer before your senior year, because um, during your senior year, you might have a lot of work and that work could build up over time. So you might not have as much time to um, complete all your college applications that you want to. And I would also suggest you do a lot of research on what colleges you can actually see yourself at. Uh, don't just apply to the colleges just because they're ranked really high or anything like that, because you might, it might not be a good fit for you. For example, if you like watching like uh, basketball or like football or something, go into like a, like a school where that's not as big of a deal, might not be the best for you or something like that. Yeah, I think my main suggestions, like David said, start early and don't um, just apply to schools just for the prestige. And also just like don't apply to too many schools. I think like try to apply to schools that you would actually find yourself being there. I applied to six personally, and I think a good range for me was four to eight. Um, a lot of my friends did over 10. I thought it would be way too much for me, but um you know, just, I would apply four to eight. That, that's a good range. Um, my other piece of advice, you know, start like preparing your rec letters early and um, the brag sheets. So for teachers and counselor or teachers, you're going to want to probably ask them near the end of the school year. That's when I ask them because some of the teachers will have, you know, certain slots and they will fill up really quickly and um, just better to get it out of the way than, you know, starting at the beginning of the year. And then also, Men, uh, prioritize your mental health. It is a very stressful process. And um, to the parents and students, don't stress you out. Don't stress yourself out too much. The college doesn't define you. And um, I just want to make sure you guys are okay. <laughs> I also applied to six colleges and would recommend that a number around there, I think worked out really well. I feel like it's helpful to start thinking about colleges in the summer and just reflecting on who you are and what you want out of college. And a lot of essay prompts will come out early in the summer as well, but they'll also probably change in August when the Common App reloads. Some schools tend to change their prompts. So just be aware of that if you decide to write or draft your essays early. I think I started that early summer and drafted a few of them before school started and it was really helpful for me. Just write things down. I would say keep track of your accomplishments, things you did in high school, ideas, any deadlines, especially for scholarships. A lot of scholarships have deadlines that are not the same as application one or are earlier um, and just keeping track of that and reaching out to current students to see what they think, especially alumni who are going or have attended the schools that you're interested in. You can reach out to them, talk to them over like Instagram or something. I've done that. Um, go on Reddit, Quora. A lot of people talk about their experiences there or YouTube. And yeah, don't forget to just take breaks and relax. Prioritize your mental health. Uh, would anyone else like to add on to this? I right, guess not. So uh, next slide. Uh, would you recommend applying to college on your own or something like a college with a, something like a consulting company? And why? Um, <clears throat> I think it just depends on your needs. Because I know that like some people might like they might perform better if there's someone there helping them or if there's someone that like guiding them or like just to provide information in general. 
but I don't think you need to drop like a huge amount of time or cash into something like this because I feel like just through my own experience, there's so much you can find by just doing a Google search. And like, rather than someone telling you what to search, I feel like if you just like search enough, you'll be, you'll be in the know enough that you don't really need to drop like a huge amount onto like consulting just for someone to tell you how to do something. Uh, yeah, I agree with Kevin. Um, I don't think it's really necessary to, uh, to pay a consulting company. Um, I did my college apps on all on my own, um, but I will say that you should definitely have other people look over your college apps, like friends or family or even teachers. Um, that was a huge help for me. I definitely agree. I think, I mean, yeah, I also did the applications on my own, but I had like my dad, he read my essays. Um, and I think that was really helpful, but um, for essay editing, I would definitely recommend like Max have like two people that you know well, like look at your essays and give you advice. Um, once it starts getting taken out of your words, it just is less and less yourself and your voice. Um, and it kind of just can get out of hand with what you're, you were trying to express originally. But um, in the same vein, I would say, I agree with Kevin, um, don't rely on a consulting company to tell you like the logistics about college um, or like have you have them plan out your timeline or something like the basic things. Um, definitely, it's like I would seek advice from maybe older students first or just online. Um, but maybe you could have somebody professionally look at your essays. Um, but also, I would just recommend like a close English teacher or um, just one of your friends who's good at writing or one of your parents who has a good perspective um, to look at your essays. And that would be much more helpful than um, maybe like a random professional person who might just make it sound more neat, which would also be good, of course. Um, but you can also just use services like Grammarly or something to um, smooth out different like grammar things or things like that. Um, yeah, I agree with Caroline. I feel like, or I didn't personally um, choose to work with a consulting company, but I feel like it could be a detriment because I had a friend who worked with a consulting company. And when I was reading through her essay, it was very like formulaic and it like just wasn't her voice. Like you could tell that it had been edited so many times that it just took away from who she actually was. Yeah, to add on to what Julia said, like we actually, I actually did try out like a consulting company like a little bit for a tiny bit and like like what they wrote like how they edited our essays it just found it like disingenuous and surprisingly like the ones that I put my real voice into like are the colleges I got into and the ones that just sounded like formulaic like Julia said were the ones that I actually didn't get into for colleges. Yeah, I just worked with my school counselor not a consulting company and there's also a lot of online resources as well. I feel like I used the collegeessayguy.com or something and this YouTube channel called Super Tutor TV. They were really helpful for me. But if you just Google like Common App Essay or Essay for Blank School, you'll find a lot of blogs and videos that you can look into to help you. Um, but obviously just take those with a grain of salt ultimately it comes down to what you want to share. And I feel like definitely preserve your own voice, have people or some people read over it and keep track of your drafts. Don't like delete everything and start new every time. Because I always went back and just found good chunks that I wanted to keep in. All right, thank you. Uh, does anyone else feel like elaborating more? All right, I don't think so. So uh, next slide. Uh, this was touched on briefly in the first question, but if you want to elaborate more, uh, how did the environment, culture, and other factors affect your choice? Yeah, so for me, I was mainly choosing between Duke, Georgia Tech, and UNC. Um, yeah, I was, main factor was probably costs, especially between UNC and Duke, and um, I ended up thinking that Duke, the, for what it offers, it would be worth its cost. So, or I hope it is. <laughs> um, and I think Duke's 
you know, student culture, being collaborative and everything. And they also had some really good programs I was interested in and some clubs that, you know, I already talked to the advisor about. So just those kind of things. Also, one thing about UNC, the class registration, um, it was definitely a con for me, but um, I think definitely each school offers their own thing. And um, I would definitely go research a lot, talk to um, people that are already at those schools. You know, if you can talk to faculty or something, that would be also really good. Um, and just something that like, uh, find those kind of characteristics that go toward your needs and whatever you want out of college. Cause everyone um, obviously like would want different part, different things out of college, yeah. So like aside from just like a college's ranking, there's a lot of important details that people don't really think about at first glance. And that might be, but like are not limited to class size, location, its closeness to a city, its closeness to just things that make life convenient. And I think all of those are things that like I sort of considered. And I was um, fortunate enough to have visited some schools prior to the application process. And if that's possible, I recommend that you guys do that. It doesn't have to be super far, just like going to like next time you're like traveling somewhere, just happening to pass by a college and looking a little bit. But like I kind of looked at like where it was located and I decided that like I was nice, I was good with the urban environment and yeah. Yeah, I don't really like the snow. So a lot of my schools were kind of in the Southeast area. Um, and when I toured Vanderbilt, I really enjoyed it and I liked the atmosphere and culture there. And I also really liked being in an urban environment and found programs that I was interested in. So definitely recommend visiting not just the campus itself, but spending some time in the surrounding area to see if you can picture yourself there. And yeah. I to like agree with Emily and Kevin, like you don't, a lot of people like romanticize schools like especially IVs, they're not like as perfect as you would imagine. Obviously they're really good still, but like you should like like take time to learn about the school like on your own and if it's actually a fit for you rather than just believing like if you get into an IV, like life will be perfect and stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, sorry, I can go really quick. Oh, okay. It's just like one minute. Um, I think for me, my choice was kind of less general to other people's experiences but um and i mean obviously i kind of like emily i also don't really like the snow so california weather um appealed to me i've never actually been there but i was just like oh well it's not going to snow there um but the main choice came down to between stanford and unc and um like i know that i would definitely have been very happy at unc and i had like a lot of connections there, like a lot of programs I could just jump right into. Um, but the main choice for me was like, I was, I've like lived most of my life here and I have these connections here, but it's like, well, then I kind of know exactly what I'm going to do with my four years here. Um, and then I kind of want to start something new. Um, like when I'm still young, like I can go somewhere different and try some new things. Um, like here, I know, like I would take this class and just go to the, these like town council meetings, go to talk to these people. But um, over there, I don't know anyone and it would be like um, challenge, challenging myself a bit more. Um, so that's like a little bit to consider, but maybe not applicable for everyone, I guess. I just wanted to add really quickly, a lot of times when you visit, I feel like there comes to be a point where you kind of feel like it's the right choice, like you know a little bit. And definitely just trust your gut and your instinct and don't let external pressures or like peers or rankings like sway your choice. Sometimes when you go on visits, you'll feel like this is where you want to be and just keep that in mind. Don't kind of get distracted from that. Um, I think everyone wanted, I think everyone wants, so uh, thank you. And, and next slide. Uh, so what do you recommend early decision, early action or restricted early action? Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I think before we talk about this, I'll, I might just like go over the definitions of each of these in case anyone doesn't know, but early decision is basically you apply to one school, usually it's a private school. I think like UVA is a special case where you can be to a public school. 
but basically if they accept you and like you're able to accept their financial offer uh, for like financial aid and stuff then you have to go it's not like a legal bound thing but it's an honor bound and just trust that colleges will definitely communicate with each other if you happen to like betray it early action is like just you apply ahead of the regular round and early action and restrictive early action kind of work in tandem restricted early action is usually also applicable to private schools and it's like set up where that they don't let you apply restrictive early action to multiple prestigious private schools at once. For example, I cannot apply REA to Yale and Harvard at the same time. I have to pick one. Likewise, it also works in tandem with early decision. Like for myself, if I when I applied early decision for UPenn, that means I could not apply restrictive early action for any school at all. So like for ED and REA, you're limited to one selection. But as far as early action goes, for public schools, there is no limit. Like if I apply to, let's say like Yale, REA, I can apply to as many public schools early action as I want. But like, this is just like a general outline. There might be like some specific terms that vary between schools. So definitely check them out because schools will definitely outline what you're allowed to do or not allowed to do. But more onto like how you pick it. I think if you are really passionate about a school and you know that, under no circumstance would you be unhappy there. Then if they offer early decision, I recommend you go for it. That was like how I felt about my school. I didn't have any qualms. I didn't have any self doubts or anything. So I went ahead and went for it. Of course, there are also some schools that just don't offer early decision, in which case I recommend just going for restrictive early action as well. <clears throat> and then obviously for state schools and other uh, publics, you can always apply early action attach those on. Um, would anyone else like to add? I can't speak to REA, but IED to Vandy and would just add that a lot of schools have different deadlines for scholarships. So if you wanna apply regular to them, the deadline for those might be earlier, might be more of like an EA deadline. So just keep that in mind. And I also think early action, I don't know if that shows more interest compared to regular, but if you are ready and your application, you feel like it's prepared well, then I would opt for that if possible. Yeah, I'd just like to add quickly that um, for me personally, I wanted to do my applications earlier. Um, so I did, I think four or three early EA and then one ED. And one thing I did want to mention is that um, I did ED Duke and I did get deferred, but I got accepted in the regular round. So even if you hit these deferrals early in the moment, you know, I would not lose hope because I definitely did. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm about to get rejected regular round. There's no way. Um, but, you know, I would still, um, you know, show your continued interest, send them emails. You still have a chance in getting in, but, um, yeah, that's just my insight. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I'm pretty sure the next question is has been touched on extensively. So this is, concludes the applying for colleges section and we're moving on to uh, hardship through a high school. So would. Yeah, that's mine. Um, I can do that. Okay, so. Um, moving on to hardships throughout high school. Throughout high school, did you ever struggle with mental health, such as dealing with mental illness or keeping up with motivation and stuff like that? For me, being at home during the pandemic and like online school was hard and just not being really able to socialize. But I felt like for me, the most stressful part has been fall semester senior year. I remember it was like close to the UNC deadline for early action. And I was trying to put together the very first application that I would send out. And I just got really stressed and overwhelmed. And it was the end of the quarter at school too. So we had a lot of tests. Um, and how I have dealt with stress and that kind of stuff is just to take walks, take breaks and just talk it out with a friend. I always talk with my mom. I find it really helpful just to verbalize what you have to do and to write things down and make a plan for when you might want to do it. Definitely just take a break, get sleep, eat, and just, yeah, spend time outside. Just 
be away from the task at hand for a little bit to clear your mind. I feel like it helped. Um, I don't think I struggled with mental illness really, but I think that um, I did have some struggles with, um, uh, with procrastinating, especially during the pandemic, um, especially since like no teachers are watching you during that time. So you could like do whatever you want basically. Um, and then um, I did have some um, stress went during the college application season because I started a lot of my applications pretty late. So I would recommend um, if you can start over the summer, just so you're not as stressed during school. Um, I guess I'll add in this point, like I was privileged enough to not have to deal with any serious mental illnesses during my time throughout high school, but I did have a lot of like stress as I was moving through my junior year or just like as like the amount of AP classes I took picked up. And I think like motivation was also one of them. I think everybody was hit pretty hard by COVID when they were sent back home. And I think that like at the end of the day, just remember that like college and high school is only one part of your life. It's like what a decade at most and you are gonna live for so much longer than that and you can accomplish so much more than what you do here. And I just hope that if your child, like for the parents out there, if your child happens to bring up that they might be feeling or struggling with some sort of mental illness, I hope that you don't brush them off and uh, take it with seriousness. I was also fortunate enough to not suffer from any mental illnesses, but similar to David, I also procrastinated on my college apps and a lot of things, which caused me a lot of stress. Um, but honestly, I was able to power through most of that. I will say that near the end of my junior year, I really struggled with burnout because it was COVID year and we were all online. Um, and also near the end of this year, uh, during senior year, because I've been afflicted with this deadly disease known as senioritis. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, it's like, when seniors are just done with school and they just don't want to keep going. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've tried to keep myself going and yeah, it's been, it's been a challenge. I think what Kevin said was very important. Um, it's just like, you know, we're only young for one time in our lives and um, getting into a good college is important or getting to any college maybe that's, in the end, maybe it's not even that important at all. Um, like it's, you only have one life and it's like, you don't have to put yourself through um, so much just to get to one thing that might not end up to lead to a good future. Like everyone can have a good future no matter what path you end up taking. So it's like, um, if it means that you should just drop this one thing that's causing you a lot of stress, um, like for example, like maybe you're, you've been playing piano for your entire life and it's just becoming a big burden on you and causing a lot of uh, anxiety to keep, catch up with everything else, then maybe it's okay. Just take a break from piano for a year or two or maybe forever. But um, like, it'll be okay if you don't have like 10 things on your plate all the time. In fact, you shouldn't. Um, it's just like sometimes um, just living your life and just being somewhat trying to be somewhat happy um, and remembering things like in 10 years you're not going to look back and be like oh I'm so glad I got that 95 in calculus um, you're going to be like oh I'm glad I like went out with my friends and um, just like had good memories with my family or something like that um, so sometimes prioritizing those things are just going to help you in general with mental health and um, just in the future as well just like just your personality and just your memories in general um but and that will also help you uh with like school related stress i think um and just remember sometimes you can just take it easy like it's okay if you don't have like as many ap's as the person sitting next to you or something like that um i know a lot of times like east and chapel hill high school um they're both really competitive um, but sometimes it's okay to not be like top of your class or like, like it'll work out. <laughs> um, you'll be fine um, no matter what. Yeah, just to add on really quickly that everyone is in the same boat as you. Um, it may not seem like it, especially through social media or something, everyone's happy, but everyone's just faking it till they make it. Um, and just know that you're not alone. Um, you can always just like talk to people if you need help. Um, but yeah, it does, especially online, it is really um, 
you feel very isolated when you just you can't see people in person and they just seem like they're having a great time but you know everyone is struggling with the same things um so yeah just take it easy on yourself yeah Okay, if no one has anything else to say, we can move on to the next question. I also just wanted to add really quickly, um, we are nearing our like written end time. However, we are most likely, we're going to go over time probably before or at 10. So if anyone um, like needs to leave or anything, feel free to, um, otherwise, um, we're gonna keep going, so. Okay, um, next question. How did you deal or cope with these mental struggles slash blocks? Um, I guess we kind of already answered that. So I guess what are some things you would recommend to future and current high schoolers um, or anyone in general who are dealing with these problems? Um, I can start this one off. I think that one of the most important things is having a great support system, like your friends, your loved ones. Um, those are people who can really help you through these tough times. And uh, yeah, that's, I think that's it. I mean, just finding a way to de-stress, like something that you like to do, or maybe just exercising. Exercising is like a good way to de-stress. Um, I think I'll just send it off by saying, like, don't be afraid to vocalize your problems. Like, don't let it build up over time until you, like, feel like you can't hold it anymore. Like, anytime that you feel like something's come up or you're struggling with something, feel free to, like, vocalize it to whoever you can, are able to confide in. I think that would be helpful to just, like, ease it out over time instead of having to deal with, like, a huge wave at once. Cool. Um, I don't think anyone else has anything to add, so we can move on to the next question. Um, I guess this question was also kind of answered, but um, did you guys enjoy online school? No, I thoroughly despised it. Um, I think that was probably like one of the worst things for both my motivation and like my drive. And I just think that like the whole transition, like especially for those who are already like in high school, I think that like they were already used to the rhythm of like attending these in school classes. And then all of a sudden for such a dramatic 180 to happen, I think it affected a lot of people, some definitely more than others. Like there are a couple of people that I know who are absolutely fine and like props to them for being able to keep up with it. But for me, especially like in the period at the beginning of junior year, I had a really hard time just getting into the rhythm of attending all of these one hour classes, but also like attending them on like a less frequent schedule than you would normally. But hopefully for future applicants, this is not something that you'll ever have to deal with again. I mean, I kind of had an opposite experience as Kevin, but not to say that like he did not have a valid reason to despise it. But for me, like for us, like my swimming discontinued. I just had the same schedule and it's basically just less school. So I like that. Um, personally, uh, I also kind of enjoyed online school just because it was less stressful um, and you know, like you had, you had to meet with your teachers for a less amount of time. So it was, you know, a good experience on my part. Yeah, I found it a little bit hard to stay connected with my peers, but it also gave me a lot of extra free time to spend with my family and to discover some other interests that I had, um, like cooking, for example. So I was definitely able to pick up some new hobbies throughout the time and just being a little bit more independent by myself at home was helpful. Um, I don't think anyone else has anything to say, so we can move on to the next question. Um, 
which is if you could go to high school again or just like relive your high school experience um what would i mean is there anything you would do differently um yeah i think oh laura do you want to go you got it <laughs> okay <laughs> so i think like for me personally, learning time management earlier rather than later would have helped me like a lot, a lot because like it showed throughout like me turning in my work in junior year as well as like me turning in my college apps during senior year. I tended to push things back a lot and like I tended to ignore them until they became so large that they were unignorable. And I just hope that like if I were able to do it. I would just learn my lesson earlier and actually be able to have a good schedule. I think a really important thing from earlier that was mentioned was when Caroline said that you should make an agenda for yourself. This was something that I didn't do. I kind of just winged everything and it, like I survived. That's all I can say. Like I, I can't say like I made it out unscathed. I think I would have benefited a lot if I had taken better care of like how I did my activities and like the time I took to do them. Yeah, I think also for me, time management was um, a major thing that I wish I could have done differently. I think it did take several years to kind of realize um, how, like, I want to manage my time well. And I think even now, like, I realized that I should have prioritized certain things over other things, especially when studying. I kind of wish I didn't spend as much studying and spend more time hanging out with friends and doing other kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I think I just kind of put too much pressure on myself and I wish I kind of realized that there really is no need. Um, like, even if I don't get all A's, it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, you look back 10 years, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then one other thing is that I definitely focus, I'm, I would say I'm better at STEM kind of things and um, not the best at reading, kind of writing, that kind of stuff. Um, and I kind of wish I had used this time to work on my English and, you know, go, go to the teachers to ask for help instead of kind of just, um, you know, BSing my way through just to get good grades and that kind of stuff. And I kind of really realized this year um, how that kicked me back in the butt and how I really should have, um, you know, tried to use school to actually learn stuff instead of getting good grades. Yeah, for me, I would just say I wish I had hung out with people more than I had, or spent less time studying and more time hanging out with people like Laura had mentioned. And just reaching out to teachers and really getting to know them well, not just in class, but you know, staying after class, having a conversation, getting to meet new people and know them as people, not just as like teachers. And I would also suggest again, not being afraid to try new things and make mistakes. I feel like there's sometimes a lot of stigma around getting a bad grade or comparing grades or failing a class or anything. But I feel like these are really good learning experiences, especially in high school. Um, so don't be afraid if you know things don't work out perfectly. I feel like it works out, works itself out in the end and high school flies by so fast. So just try to make the most of your time here know people, meet people, read books, do what you enjoy, and just make the most of your time. Um, yeah, I would say if I could go through high school again, I would talk to people because I went into freshman year, you know, I was really shy and I was really scared of talking to people. But like looking back down the road, it didn't really matter. Like even if I went up to someone and I completely fumbled, like I wouldn't remember it right now. And I think we underestimate how much more enjoyable high school can be if you have friends. Like the classes that I enjoy the most are like when I'm with my friends and I find that I like actually learn better just cause I'm more comfortable like in that environment. Yeah, I agree with everyone. Um, I think it's definitely very important to lean a lot of times, especially in our community, like we're leaned a lot into the um, the study aspect of school, like the three S's of study, sleep, and social life. Um, but I think, yeah, personally, like, I feel like I had a good high school experience overall. Um, I didn't, I wouldn't change too much about, um, my high school experience, but 
maybe I would say, yeah, I could have done better, like, especially this year sleeping. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, some, some things, sometimes I'm just like, I don't even have that many assignments. I just should have gone to sleep earlier. So maybe I would do that. Um, and also just being more social could always be improved, I guess. Um, but overall, um, it's just like what I said before, it's like high school is a time where um, school is definitely very important and um, you should always make it something that's important, but um, also make other things in your life important as well. Um, because school isn't everything. It's not supposed to be your entire life. Um, yeah, just make your life something memorable outside of high school. That's what I would uh, recommend in general, I think. Um, I think everyone has said something about this question, so we can move on to the next one. Um, yeah, so how did you guys handle the Chinese American identity in your school and how should our own Chinese community do better to support students on the identity aspect? This also kind of applies to just like Asians in general, I guess. Yeah, this was definitely a challenge for me, especially socially. So I went to Glenwood in elementary school and was in the dual language program. So my class was very diverse. I had a lot of friends who were Chinese and who were like me. But at DA, I didn't have many Chinese peers at all, especially in my grade. It's super small and it can tend to be a little bit clicky. So I'm sure the experience would have been totally different if I was in public high school, as I probably would have had more Chinese or Asian students to be friends with, but it's been really amazing to be a part of this community, the Chinese school community, and to have friends nearby who I can talk to and hang out with. There's also some Chinese students in other grades at DA, so I've been lucky to meet them as well, and just meeting upperclassmen and underclassmen. A lot of my good friends tend to come from grades that are not in mine. So I don't know if that made sense, but just meeting new people who might not necessarily be in your grade or class helped me. Um, and for the second question, I guess just more community outreach or like programming where people like us can be in a space together where we can talk and meet new people. Um, yeah. Um, I guess I can touch on this question a bit. I, I mean, I'm not sure if I fully understood what the question was intended to be, but um, kind of, I guess if we're talking about kind of the mi model minority myth, um, like the idea that uh, Chinese Americans are always like very good students, very good at math. Um, they're gonna be like doctors or uh, like some engineers or something like that. Um, it's something that is real in public schools and I guess every school. Um, and it's something that I guess it's good to be cognizant of um, and something we shouldn't really lean into, like saying, oh, of course I got a good score in that, like, cause I'm Chinese or something. Like, I don't think any of us would really say that, but um, it, like sometimes people do say that, like, oh, that's why they got a good score at that math test because they're Chinese. Like you don't further that in there, just be like, no, that's not, that's not <laughs> like, yeah, we shouldn't be perpetrating those myths at all. But um, I think in general, um, I think at East people are generally um, welcoming of Chinese Americans. Um, it can be kind of, uh, like people make their own friend groups that are very similar to each other, um, kind of like self-segregating in a way, like a lot of um, people of one race are friends with each other and don't really uh, branch out to other groups. So it's not really related to this question that much, but I would recommend just like sometimes going out of your friend, your typical friend groups from middle school or from freshman year and just trying to make friends um, who aren't in your typical friend groups. And that just helps um, in general improve just diversity in your life and like in the community. Um, and yeah, I, I just recommend like, you know, making friends with people who aren't always just Chinese American or um, 
yeah, it just, it will help you have better, uh, have a more diverse group of friends and also um, in the community help the, help bridge divides between Chinese Americans and everyone else too. Um, I guess no one really has anything else to say. Um, so we can move on to the next question. No, it's a Q and A. Sorry. Um, okay. So at this time, we're going to um, start off with answering any questions that were in the chat, um, and then afterwards we can move on to like live conversation about um, just any questions we have. So, uh, should we go in order of them being asked? Or... Yeah, I think we're going in order of them being asked. Um, let me find them. So, uh, I'm so there's like it's organized. One second. Okay, so uh, one of them is um, how do scholarships work? And are they easy to get? And should one focus on a scholarship? I believe there are some big scholarships, like the bigger ones with higher amounts of money you tend to have deadlines that coincide with application ones. So those tend to happen in the fall. And I'm sure you can Google some. I know big ones like the Coca-Cola scholarship or if you're looking for school ones like Robertson or Moorhead, um, those are ones that are pretty popular. And then each individual school might also have scholarships, either um, full tuition or different types that you might qualify for. And they're all listed on the school's website. So you can look those up. Some of them you have to apply for and submit an application for some, you're just automatically considered by submitting the actual college application. So we we'll definitely check out the websites for schools that you're interested in for more information. Cool. Um, next question is, um, I mean, if you feel if if you're comfortable with sharing, what is your GPA, um, SAT slash ACT score, and high school ranking to get into your dream college? Again, if you're comfortable with sharing. Um. Well, I. All right. Um. I guess I'll, I'll share. But I think before I share, just to keep in mind that this, these are just numbers. And I can say for a fact that these numbers are only part of your application and they're definitely not the majority. But my GPA was, I think, like 4.7 something unweighted and 4.0 unweighted. No, sorry, 4.7 weighted and then something on. Yeah. And then my ACT was 35 and my SAT was. 1560 and then my class rank was two. Okay, uh, following Kevin, my numbers are not that impressive. Like I said before, I think I was like a medium student. Um, but just to give you all like a good idea of how like extracurriculars, extracurriculars could affect you. Um, my ACT was a 35 and my weighted was a 4.6 something. I can't really remember, but I, um, I had like a lot of really good academic schools contact me just because of like my tennis, you know? So, yeah. Um, cool. So if um, no one else wants to share, we can move on to the next question, which is college rankings versus major reputation. Which factor um, do you weigh more when deciding which college to attend?
I think if you definitely have a major that you're 110 percent going to do at a college, then go for the major ranking. If you like are undecided, probably go for the college ranking. Sorry, give us one sec. We're trying to find more questions. Um, it's okay. I'll talk while you find questions. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. So I would say, like, to pick a school that's very well rounded, because I know, like, a lot of people that switch their majors. So if you're going into school, like, yeah, I'm going to be this major, and then you get there and you're like, I absolutely hate this major, then um, I would say, like, yeah, just. <laughs> Just try to pick a school that's well-rounded because you never know. Yeah, I would add on to that too. I'll, like almost everyone I know, like in college now, they said they've changed their majors drastically since when they went in. Like a lot of my friends at UNC, they said they, well, one of them said she was going to go in for um, like pre-med and then she ended up doing like a history major or something like totally different. Um, so it's like, I would... In my opinion, I would go for something like Julie said, that's like generally just a good school, like pretty good in most areas so that even if you want to switch, um, you can, because I'm not, I'm also not like 100% set on like, oh, I need to do like biomedical engineering. Um, like definitely if you're into that and you know you want to do that, I would recommend that you find a school that's good for that. But um, a lot of people also aren't totally sure. So um, it's, it's generally a safe bet, like any of the top like 50 schools honestly they're pretty good in almost every aspect unless it's like MIT and you're like you might want to go in history or something like maybe don't pick that but um you know generally you're probably safe with most schools also some schools at large or within their individual colleges you might be applying into a major specifically or they might have rules for like how you can switch between schools and majors so if that's something that's important to you, that might be worth looking into if you're not sure of what you might want to do and want to know like how flexible it is. Uh, okay, next question is, any recommendations on how to get internship opportunities? For me, um, I was actually part of uh, Chapel's program, AOIT, which is Academy of Information Technology. And you're basically required to take, like have an internship, I think, but that's also with the teacher helping you. So um, especially for CS, I would definitely contact your teachers. So that would be Mr. Reed, um, I don't know, Ms. Walker at uh, Chapel Hill, I don't know, at other schools. And I just emailed them um, and I was like, hey, like, do you know of any um, opportunities for the summer, especially during COVID, I had nothing to do. So I wanted to do something um, like as an internship and they were able to uh, get me this internship. And I think um, several of my classmates were also part of this. And um, from there, I think you just kind of uh, got to look on LinkedIn, Indeed, that kind of those kind of places. Um, I would also mainly I'll just use your connections to see like, oh, do you like know someone that may have an internship for me. Um, and then just always, if you see an opportunity come up, um, I don't remember how I found my uh, internship last year. I think it was um, also a teacher contacted me, but definitely use your resources at school. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, I think that it may be kind of hard to find an internship, especially in high school. But another good way to show a uh, work experience to colleges would be a uh, getting a job. For example, I worked at Panera Bread and I think getting a job could be very helpful for this. Yeah, I kind of think internships in high school are kind of like just based on the connections your parents might have. Like, Because as high schoolers, most high schoolers don't like 
have enough expertise in the field to be able to get actual internships. And I think it's better to just like, cause like I had like an internship, but like I basically did nothing and it was just like for the name. So like, I don't know, I don't really, and I, I didn't even put in my application because I actually didn't do anything. And I just felt like, I don't know, just don't do internships if it's just for the name because it's not actually gonna help that much. This isn't for internships specifically, but if you have in mind like an idea of a career you might wanna do in the future, it might also be fun to go out and shadow anybody who you might be able to be in contact with. I wanna do like a pre-dental track in college. So I shadowed dentists over the summer before my senior year. So if that's something that interests you, could also be a good way to spend some time learning about what you might like to do. Um, okay, cool. If any, no one else uh, wants to say anything about this, um, uh, we're going to ask a question about video games. Um, so did you guys play any video games? And um, how did you balance this type of activity with your study slash college applications? And uh, kind of like, yeah, uh, any suggestions for younger students who might struggle with this? I mean, yeah, I personal. Now you got it, Kevin. You got it. No, go, go, go. No, you go. You go first. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, um, I played a lot more video games than I should have. That's something I'll say. But I don't regret it because I think it was a way for me to unwind. Because like it was strictly not academic related it was not very competitive or anything it was just a way for me to enjoy myself and enjoy myself with some friends i do i can admit that it got a little bit out of hand sometimes so i think that if you're going to play video games make sure you balance your schedule yep. to add on to what kevin said i also played a little too much video games like i sacrificed like i ended up like during covid since i had free time i played like this video game called Brawl Stars competitively and did earn some money from it. But I would say like video games are definitely not bad as long as you play that play it in moderation because like during the time I played it competitively, like my grades are pretty bad and I had to like grind the second semester to pull them up. So yeah, you should play them in moderation. Um, so I also used to play video games, but recently I've made a more of a shift to like not playing video games at all. And I've found that I had a lot of lot more free time. Um, video games used to like cut into my sleep and ruin my sleep schedule, but now my sleep is actually good. Um, so, well, I wouldn't say it's, video games are a bad thing. I think it's a great way to unwind, but now I've just like, my way to unwind is just like hanging out with friends now or just like relaxing, you know, so. Okay, um, next question. How would you recommend uh, showing interest in a college after getting deferred or waitlisted to up your chances? I think I can speak on this. So I did get deferred from Duke at first. Um, the, how I showed my interest was I sent an email to the admissions officer. For us, it's Margie Strickland, in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would definitely contact your specific admissions officer if you can find their name because um, they're the ones that read your application and like you make the impression on them. And I just kind of wrote an email and I was like, hey, like I, you know, Duke is still my number one choice. This is what I've done since I've applied in October. So it's been two months. Um, like this is what I've done with clubs, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, thank you for this opportunity, all that kind of stuff. And I just kind of contacted other upperclassmen and saw like, what could I do? Um, so one of my friends, friend had also been in the same situation. So I kind of talked with him and see what I could do. So I think I ended up sending two emails to her before the um, regular decision. And yeah, I think that's mainly what I did.
Yes. Okay. Um, question mostly for Emily. Do you have any tips for running for student council or being a part of student council? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say for me, I had to write a little blurb about why I wanted to do it and what I could contribute. So if there's anything that you feel like from your current experience that you'd want to change or any initiative that you would want to start, having examples of that in your blurb or speech is helpful. That way your peers can connect with you and maybe you know what you want to see changed is something that they also want to see changed. A suggestion I have in terms of student government in general is just to be very vocal and um, talk to people. It's a really fun place to be in, but it really requires you to be vocal and willing to reach out to people. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to speak up when you have something to share, to take ownership of your ideas and um, just to make your voice heard, especially in the meetings. It can get a little bit busy or hard to um, contribute, but just kind of keep at it and be vocal, I would say. Okay, um, so it is almost 10. So that means we're super unfortunately going to close the meeting for um, today. Um, so, yeah, I think um, if you guys have any more questions, you can, you maybe can contact them, but you can also ask to us and then we can like, I don't know, you might get your answer or not. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of our high school graduate seminar. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate everyone's uh, um, yeah, speaking and sharing the information. And I wish you all have a good uh, life and time in the, your college. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.